He's going to bless us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning for your spirit. We thank you for the same spirit that's been here all morning, that spoke to us during worship, that, that put words on Maria's heart, that put words on Val's heart. It's the same spirit that's going to continue to guide us as Pastor Rod ministers to us with your word. So, Father, I pray that you will give him everything he needs to accomplish what you've called him to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. You're on there. It sounds like it. Good morning, Coastal. Thanks, Joey. I appreciate uh, the announcements because I don't have to do them when Joey does them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm just so grateful for those that are visiting, those that are with us for the first time. Great to have you with us. Uh, Ron and Debbie, lovely to have you with us. Thanks for allowing your parents to come and just bless us. Buzz and Sharon, I've just been a real blessing to the church, and we're so grateful. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Scott and Heidi, I would like you to stand just for a moment. Um, I just kind of sensed in worship, God says, saying that um, you, you, you've, you've made adjustments uh, in, in your schedule, and then obviously Val told me just before I walked up here that uh, you adjust your schedule so you can at least get some services with us. Um, he's all over the place. and so. But I, I just want to pray for you because God says I want to increase um, your territory and your influence and your mandate. And uh, the fruit that you'll see at the end of this year is going to be far greater than you've seen in the years prior. So I just wanted to pray that word, if you would agree with that. Um, I really sense God wants that year of increase for you um, and, and Heidi as you labor together and what you do in Africa and what you do in Dakota and all these areas. Just want to just pray for you. So if you would just stretch your hands towards Scott and Heidi. Father, we, we want to agree with your word. Your word says that, uh, um, that you, you declare your promises over us. And so there's promises that, Father, that you would place an increase on this family's life. Father, he's, he's submitted himself to take his gift and serve. And Heidi, to take a gift and serve humanity wherever they find themselves. And so, Father, we thank you for a divine increase this year for their lives. And so we, we look to that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Appreciate you joining us for worship when you can. Hallelujah. So, um, so we, we have a, a kind of just an unction, a, a, inspi a inspiration from God that this is going to be a year of joyous increase. And so we want to just say yes and amen to that. Because many times we, we hear it, we put it on the shelf, we hear it and say, well, that's great, wonderful. But when you align your heart with something that Father's declaring, it's that alignment, that, that power of agreement where to agree, touching anything, it's done by our Father in heaven. We get to agree, and, so, and, the, and, and the, you and the Spirit say yes, and you agree. So, um, and so I really want to be able to speak into that and uh, continue to talk into that, a, a year of joyous increase. There's so many areas that we need increase in, so many areas that we need um, increase in our, in, our, in our spiritual lives, in our spiritual relationships. I increase w with our relationship with God. There's relationships uh, one another that we're looking for increase. And uh, there's increase of, of, of godly government. My gosh, we need that all in every area of our lives. Um, we need that. There's so many areas. And people are saying, okay, well, you've told us and you called us to pray. What should we pray? Can I ask you to pray for increase? And that can be increased in so many areas. Some of you need an increase in your bank balance. Some of you need an increase in your health. There are so many areas. So when God in, uh, comes and, 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 and kind of uh, nudges you, He may just, the Holy Spirit will continually nudge you in different areas that there needs to be an increase here. There needs to be an increased awareness of Almighty God. There needs to be an increased uh, awareness that there's need, needs, people need salvation. And there's, so there's so many areas that we need to pray for. I know there's loved ones that, that don't know Christ, and we, we need God to become the increase in their life, and so that, that we can see that. So, yeah, we set February aside for fasting and prayer, and it's not, it's not the highlight of everybody's world when you call fasting and prayer. And, uh, but as I started speaking last week, I spoke about the joy of fasting and how um, it's, it's, it's important because it has so many things. It, I spoke about it as uncluttering uh, the pride, the selfishness, the sin, the appetites of distraction. All these things come under subjection, come, get arrested when you start fasting. I found that this week as I dived into fasting. I dived into it uh, a lot more uh, uh, aggressively than I normally do. Kind of, I wean myself as I go up to the day. 
Uh, but <laughs> I went crazy, Super Bowl, wings, coffee, another cup of coffee, and then, boy, Monday, boom, water all the way through the week. And I'll tell you what, I had every kind of wrestle that you can possibly think of. The flesh was bouncing out through my ears everywhere. I had headaches. I had backaches. I mean, I had everything. But I'll tell you what, like I said last week, soul, shut up. Because we're going to hear God. And when I stepped into Friday, it's like it was quiet. And I could hear God. That's what fasting does. It arrests us because of so much busyness, so much distraction. And if I can hear God's voice, like Jesus said, I need to do what my Father says. I need to say what my Father says. So this morning, I, I really want to be talking about the joy of prayer. Joy of prayer. It's something that we wrestle with. Again, the soul doesn't like it because you've got to rest it and come to a focused attention and pray. And I want to be able to talk about that. And I spoke on, on Wednesday. I just said uh, we spoke about how, uh, how the great, the, one of the greatest ministries we have is prayer. Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He didn't teach them to preach. He just said, go and tell. <laughs> go and tell. So if you want to know how to preach, just go and tell. Okay, That's Jesus' uh, instruction on how to preach. But he taught us how to pray. Because it's important. And so we, we under, and, and, and unpack some of the things on Wednesday about God's attitude towards prayer. And uh, because um, not all of us were there, so I just want to kind of touch on it because it needs to lay a platform. So where I'm going with the joy of prayer this morning. And so as we look at God's attitude towards prayer, God's heart can be seen in Scripture is so towards prayer. And, and, uh, he, and, he, and when we know that his heart's towards prayer, it helps encourage us, encourage us, motivate us, embolden us to pray. Because we realize the Father is so for us to pray. And so when we get to see that, it builds faith up. And so um, it's not difficult to approach God because we know he's postured and waiting for us to, to come and, and fellowship with him and pray. And he's not that mean, uh, angry principle that you're going to be bothering him when you pray. No. He's, he's beckoning us to come and pray and, and be with him because he created man so he could have fellowship with man. And prayer is where we find, our time, find ourselves fellowshipping and spending time with him. And when we see the willingness for God to answer prayer from Scripture, it also creates such an encouragement and a boldness within us as we see that. So as we look at Scripture, we see clearly from Scripture God's willingness and he is so pleased that we pray. And so, so, so please, we start with Proverbs 15, verse 8. We see there that says, the prayer of the upright is his delight. The upright is those that are sincere. And, those that, and he says, I delight. When it's strong pleasure. It brings him strong pleasure when he sees us sincerely coming and praying. And so we see that. In Song of Solomon, I saw these words, and it says, let me see your face and let me hear your voice. And cry, it's, it's, it's a cry of relationship that God has for his people. And so we go on to the New Testament and clearly reveals uh, all this to the believer that we should pray and expect to receive when we pray. When we look at scriptures like Matthew 7, 7 through 8, it says, Ask and, you will, uh, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be given, open, uh, open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Notice that everyone who asks receives. And who, he who seeks finds. And he who knocks, it will be open. All positive. All positive as, as we look at that scripture. I've now listed all the other scriptures. I'm just going to run through there. I'm just going to blast faith into your, 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 your faith sails so that we can just, just realize that God desires and takes great pleasure in answering our prayers. It goes on to Matthew 21, 22. It says, whatever you, things you ask in, my, in, in prayer, believing you, you believe you'll receive it. Therefore, it says here in Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. Goes on to John fourteen thirteen. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, it will, it, I will do it. John fifteen. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire. And will shall be done to you. And last one, John 16. Until now you've asked me nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. I want to talk about the joy of prayer. And so when we look at the joy of prayer, um, though God delights and it takes great pleasure in answering prayer, um, there is a condition God places on how we need to pray. We can't go flippantly into, into prayer. 
We can't go and, and babble a lot of junk and be whining and all these different things that we, can, we find people and we want to know how come our prayers only get to the ceiling and they fall flat back on our bed where, or wherever we pray. It's because that we, we pray amiss and we've got to understand there are conditions and, and conditions mustn't hold us back to, for why we pray. Conditions must make us boldly leap into prayer because uh, when we see it, we know we can confidently come to the Father and speak to Him because we realize we're praying according to His Word. And so I want to be able to just bring some th- uh, a list of thoughts and points up that would help us so we boldly can come in this time that we're praying and we can boldly come into the throne room and know that our God hears us. And so I want to just start with listing and so that we're not ignorant and we know that our prayers are answered. Let me just list a few things. I really encourage you to take notes, even if it's just the headings. Even if you don't have a pen and everything, you've got a device that has a, has a camera. Take pictures of the slides. It won't bother me. I won't think you're taking a selfie when you're taking the picture, okay? But I really, I'll be more encouraged when I see you taking a picture because I know that you have access to it and say, what did Rod say again? You can actually, oh yeah, I've got a picture of it. Let me go back there. And, ha- and, and then you can fill in some notes and can continue. I really encourage you just to, at least once before the day's through, go through this list again. Throw th- through this list just so uh, it, 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 gets, it gets cemented deeper in. And when you come to pray, let's go through the checklist and let's, let's ask the Father, am I praying correctly? Because I want to make sure I can boldly and confidently declare what I'm about to pray. So let's have a look at this and let's have a look at the first one. The first thing you need to do is you need to pray in the name of Jesus. We need to pray in the name of Jesus. In John 14, which I, re- I read to you in verse 13, Jesus speaking now, red writing my Bible. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So there's a definite emphasis by Jesus saying, listen, I'm giving you signing power. Just sign my name. You know, some people give other people their credit cards, just go buy this, and they just sign the person's name. Yeah, yeah. But you can't do this legally with Jesus, okay? You can do this because Jesus... Um, said we can here in the scripture. Why do we pray in the name of Jesus? We as followers are in Christ. We're righteous in Christ. We have access because of Christ. Because we have that, we can say that in, as Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, we come to you, and that's what we stand in. We don't stand in our self confidence or our self worth or our self recognition. No, we come because we recognize Jesus as the one who went to Calvary paid the price, has made the way, and he said, now you can come in my name. No man can come to the Father except by me. And so we can boldly come and use the access code. We use the access code. And so we have access. And so apart from Jesus, we don't. He's our mediator. And this gives us all the followers of Christ the liberty and the boldness to approach the throne of grace. Amen? Amen. We can boldly come in there and say, Father, I come in Jesus. My righteousness stinks says it's it's filthy rags in the bible it's rubbish so i stand in your your righteousness jesus and i speak to the father and the father hears us so we have that boldness we have full access because why because jesus is sitting at the right hand of the father vouching for us he's my boy he's my girl and we and they're all ears romans 8 32 he who had he did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all How shall he not with him as freely give us all things? Freely give us all things. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So Jesus is definitely part of what licenses us to come boldly to come and pray. And there's such an abundance for where we go to. You've got to understand this. If everybody had their prayers answered at every need on planet earth, was answered by God, guess what? His storeroom would not deplete one millimeter. Not one micron. It won't deplete because the, he's just as rich as he ever was. Just ever abundant as he ever was. So it's not that he doesn't have. <laughs> he's abundant. We just need to have access and go and ask and, and receive. 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says here, For all the promises of God are in him. Who's him? Jesus. Are yes. And in him, Jesus Amen to the glory of God through us. We ought to see that Jesus is the one that has, a, has licensed all of us to come boldly into prayer. 
So the first thing we need to do is pray in the name of Jesus. The second thing we need to do is we need to pray with praise and thanks. Important that we come with praise and thanks. Many of us have other different attitudes when we come into prayer. Whining, bleating, moaning, and some flowery language. And it, it's not needed. We praise because it's a fact. It's not a feeling that we have access. I praise because I have access. What can separate me from the love of Christ? Shall trial, tribulations, things present, things come? Nothing shall separate me. So I win no matter what. So I come boldly, no matter how I am. Even, even old Corrie ten Boom in the concentration camp could boldly come and say, thank you, Jesus, whether I live or die, I praise you because you're king. And that's the, that's the attitude that we can. We shaft it straight in the enemy's eye when we do that. Uh, uh, for Psalm 104 and verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Tell you so when we enter that, it's just it just changes the atmosphere because we have a gate, because we have a relationship, we have access, thank you to Jesus. So we can uh, come and express our hearts in the courts of God and he hears us. And so God is really wanting us to bear understand that we have access, but the access comes through incredible uh, the, the, the the power of, of, of praise and thanks that we approach him. And Philippians says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So I tell you, it, we're, not, we're not giving uh, God thanks for the situation. We're giving God thanks in the situation, which is a different, man. It may be all hell around, but when we stand up and we still give God praise and give God thanks. I'm praying myself quite hot up here. I don't know if it's because of the fasting and no food up here. Hallelujah. But praise the Lord, better, better hydrate, hallelujah. So the, fir the first one, pray in the name of Jesus. Second one, pray with praise and thanks. The third one, approach God with no condemnation. No conde condemnation. Man, you need to come, come. It's like me coming in and hugging Val and I've got this huge, huge, huge briefcase between me. There is, there is hindrance between me and having full contact with, with my wife because I've got this jolly briefcase in the way. Now that, that's not good. Hallelujah. Same thing when you come to the Father. You come with, with condemnation. And he says, don't come with condemnation. In Psalms 66, verse 18. Let me sit with this because I know what it's like with it, when pastors hold a drink, hold a drink. Just drink and put it down. Do, get, get on and do something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Psalm 66, 18, he says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Because we cannot, when we come and we approach and we remember our sins, and we're reminded about our sins, and, and we're conscious about our sins, and, and we, haven't, we have unconfessed sins in our, in, in, our, in our, and sin is when we miss the mark, church, and we all miss the mark. Even when we give our lives to Jesus, we're still going to miss the mark, okay? We're still going to miss the mark, but we know that we can have a Savior that we can go to and, 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 and sort it out, because it hinders prayer, it voids prayer, it voids our faith when we have these, these, these things that are in our life. So the answer uh, is when, when we, as followers, is what 1 John 1, 9 says here. For if we confess our, our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if by faith we confess and repent and we come um, trusting God, he, and his, his forgiveness is there. He's promised it in His Word. If we declare it, we announce it, and we, we call it what it is. Stop mealy-mouthing about it. Don't try and disguise it as something else. Call it what it is. This is sin. And don't just be coward and call it sin. Call it pride. Call it lust. Call it what it is. And when you do, you'll get set free. And so we have it. Say, Dad, you know about it. Devil, I've told Dad about it. So stop whining in my ear about it. Because you'll continue. Well, how can you go to the Father when you've done this and you said this? He does that. I know. I put on pants just like everybody else. I put on shoes just like anybody else. I have the same challenges with the same devil in my head. And this is the biggest battleground you'll ever have is here between your two ears. And so we've got to realize, man, devil, I've said it. I've confessed it. It's clean. It's clear. Jesus paid the price. It's done. So now can I have an intimate time with my father and get out of here? That's what you've got to be. If I'm, telling, I'm just, just being practical in how we do. We are free of sin. We can't come sin conscious to the father. No, we can't be that. God said, listen, I paid a high price so that you don't have to be sin conscious when you come and be uh, in fellowship with me. I paid a high price, my son and his death and, 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 and his blood 
paid for it. So you free. 1 Timothy says, I desire therefore that man, that men pray everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> He's got everywhere, including Flagler Beach and Flagler County. He's got everywhere. He's got everybody that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, without sin conscious. Timothy's trying to say, come, let's lift up holy hands. Hebrew 4, 16 says, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find, and find grace um, to help in time of need. We need to approach boldly and confidently, not in ourselves, because the blood of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10 says, there's therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest, by the, blood of the land, by, by the blood of Jesus. I tell you, we confidently come there and know that our sins are, are covered, are forgiven. Past, present, and future. John, can you switch off both those main lights? just want to just check something. Yeah, you can put them back on. None of you guys glow in the dark, yeah. <laughs> None of you guys glow in the dark. So I just wanted to see that the... It definitely wasn't glowing on the front row, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's where it's supposed to glow, in the front row, eh? Hallelujah. Okay, let's, fourthly. So we don't approach with condemnation, fourthly. Right motive. Man, it's good to have the right motive. God checks our, out and sees our motive. Our motive is important. James 4, it says here, verse 2, Yet you do not have, because you do not ask. You ask, and you do not receive. Because you ask a misc, a miss, that you may spend it on your own pleasures. What should our motive be in prayer, church? What should our motive be, be when we come? And what should our life motive and our life posture sh should be? It's to bring glory to God. That is our posture. That's how, you know, we need to approach it. And Father, when I see the miracle go through Ben's life and his body, we, we, we'll give glory to God because we know where that healing came from. We give God the glory, and we show His goodness. Every time this happens, and when answered prayer, and we get up and share testimonies, we give God glory because we know it is done because we prayed to a God who loves us, and He's answered us, and it brings glory to Him. It says the goodness of God draws a man to repentance. And when we have these things answered, and these answered prayers, we bring glory to God. And it's so powerful and so important that we do that. In, James, uh, in John 14, uh, which uh, 13, which we've already are, uh, uh, read here. It says, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus is saying, The reason I'm doing all this, that the Father may, be given, may get glory. And so our motive needs to say, God, I'm asking you this, so this can happen and this glory can come to you. And when we see that end attitude towards what we're attempting to pray for, God is saying, That's the right motive. That's the right motive. I want to just share something just to illuminate this. It's about a Christian businessman that was, who travels often, um, and, and he was sitting next to a mom that had a little one-year-old on her lap. And while they were traveling, he got to share about God, and he got to share about God's goodness and, 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 and about the, the Sunday service and things that happened, the miracles and all that. And they had a, a very cordial, fun conversation. And in, in the trip, um, the, the, the mom needed to go to the bathroom, so he, she asked, could you hold my little man? He was one year old. Uh, and, he, and he said, yeah, sure. And he, he being a dad himself. And when she passed him over, she saw, he saw that uh, the little guy had club feet. And so while she was in the bathroom, he just laid hands and said, Father, a miracle, please, for your glory. And his he feet came whole. So he put the cover blanket over him, and when the mom came back, he didn't say anything. He just put the baby back on her lap, didn't say anything, and walked off the plane. Can you imagine the glory that God's going to get when she comes to realize? I last saw him on the plane before I went to the bathroom, and his feet were like that, and I came back, and they weren't. And so God gets the glory. Hallelujah, and that's exciting. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God are in him, Jesus, as yes, and in Jesus, amen, to the glory of God through us. Through us, we bring the glory to God. Hallelujah. Fifthly, get in the list. Is this helping? It's good. Hallelujah. Being right with our relationships. Woo-hoo. Hallelujah. 
Unforgiveness stops prayer dead. That's definitely when your prayers are going to hit the roof and bounce straight back. Unforgiveness stops prayer dead. Lord Jesus, when he taught his disciples to pray, he said, yeah, in Luke 4, 11, he says, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. God forgives us in proportion to the amount we forgive. I'll read you a scripture to prove that. Important that you understand that. That he wants us to forgive totally. And sometimes we say, well, um, forgiveness is, is not emotion. I just want to just say, it's a decision you have to make. It doesn't based on your feelings. It, you have to forgive. That's what the ins instructions, forgive. If you had an IOU of $1 million or $6 million, I tell you what, um, you, would, you would tear up your $6,000 IOU if you were pardoned for your $6 million. And that's what happens. We are tearing up an IOU or whatever you think has been unjust. Forgive. Forgive. You have to forgive. Mark 11, 25 through 26 says, Whatever, when, whenever you stand praying, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Jesus speaking. Woo, heavy important that we realize that relationship is so important and then just say father you know whether you be able to get to say that face to face but in your heart father i forgive them forgive them and it's a choice that you make and so it's important we're talking of making sure our relationships are right so we can have answered prayer so important it's not who's right it's what's right especially in the home 1 peter 3 7 it says husbands Woo-hoo, that's us. Likewise, dwell in with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, as being the heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Home harmony is key to answered prayer. God says, I don't want to hear Sort it out first, sort it out first, then I will hear. So we need to just, just look at that. And so let's have a look at our relationships. Sixthly, being directed and helped by the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh. In Romans 8, 14, it says, yeah, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The Greek says, those who are being continually led by the Holy Spirit. Those who are regularly and continually led by the Holy Spirit are the sons of God. Our prayers need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And it's so important that we see that. Why do we need to do that? Because Romans 8 continues to say this in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weakness. I'll expand on that weakness. It says here in Scripture, it expands on itself. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who, who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. You understand that we all, as uh, people, need to lean on the Holy Spirit to help us to pray, because we don't know how to pray, and we don't know what to pray. That's our weakness. That's the weakness that, 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 that uh, Paul is, is writing here by the Holy Spirit. He's saying we are weak. In our weakness, we don't know how to pray. And so we need to ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, how do I pray this? What do I pray and how do I pray as, 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 we, approach, uh, as we approach the Father? It's our weakness. Holy Spirit comes and helps us how to and what to pray. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is such an important part of our lives. Many kind of just say, okay, I have the indwelling spirit because I'm, I'm born again. But there is a special 
request in a special time when the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes you and He takes full residence inside you. It talks about being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of a, of a heavenly language. Speaking in tongues, Paul writes about it. It's important that you understand that. that. Paul says, I thank God I pray in, in tongues more than you ought. There's tongues that, that, that allow us to, uh, when a tongue comes, there's a prophecy that's, uh, that's a prophetic tongue. Then there's tongues that I've seen. It's happened in Africa when, when uh, one of our pastors went to preach in Zululand and there was no interpreter. So he just spoke in English and they all came up and they were excited and the whole, whole audience was Zulu and couldn't speak English. And they all came and started speaking Zulu to him. And he said, I don't, I don't understand. He realized God had translated from English to Zulu for them. And that's, that's also a way God, God communicates. Because on the day of Pentecost, they all heard from all over the nations. They all heard in their own language the very thing that they were speaking. And so, and then the other thing is that the, the, the Spirit is brought to us so we can pray. So when we're weak, and I, I know, I tell you what, my English language, it's limited as it is, okay? But it surely gets limited when I get to pray. Because I, eventually I just don't know how many other words to find to hit at this thing. And then I go, my I suddenly have an internal prayer meeting with the Holy Spirit. And suddenly he's praying the divine will of God because it says he searches the heart and understands it. So I really say that to encourage you. If you haven't been baptized, let's, let's ask God to give you that language and you can pray. And, you, and, and it allows you to pray. And, and because us earthlings are limited, our language is limited. And so when we can start praying in the Holy Spirit, my gosh, it opens up. And we're praying the divine will of God. And so I, I just know that in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, this need or this situation. I'm just praying in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows the need, and I'm praying into that. And, uh, and, 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 and we see that. And so we, we need to be linked up and led by the Holy Spirit. And Paul carries on to say, yeah, this is why we need to do this. Now to him, Ephesians 3, 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think, according to the power that is working in us. You understand that exceeding things can happen when we start yielding. We need to lean on the supernatural and, and, and watch answered prayer. Watch the, uh, the, the prayer come that straight out the heart of God into the situation. You get that? Hallelujah. Seventhly, in accordance to the will of God. We have our own kind of fairy ideas and we have our own all sorts of mix that the world throws at us and we kind of take a pick and mix and we're going to pray this and pray that no 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 we pray god's will what's his will it's his word what's his will, word full of it's filled with promises if god says i promise this it will he will not deny something that he's promised he promised abraham a son he promised abraham that his descendants will be as many as the stars in the in the sky and the sand on the ground. So whether he was happy and he was looking up and praising God, he saw the stars, and when he was miserable and downcast, he looked at the sand and he says, Heck, I'm just I'm blessed no matter which way I look. I'm just blessed. And so that's the God that we want to have a look at, and it's according to his will, his promises. Peter, uh, 2 Peter uh, 1, 4, it says here, We have been given exceedingly great and precious promises. And so the importance for us, church, if we talk about wanting increase, let's talk about increasing our knowledge of the Word of God, knowledge of the promises of God. So what are the promises of God? Google it. There's people in the, that, that are just absolute wonderful teachers that have listed it. There's books on the promises of God. And so you can go through there, list, look at all the promises and say, okay, I have a need. That's the situation. God, there's your promises. Now I'm just going to quote the promises, quote the promises, quote the promises. Why? Because we're praying His will. His will is His promise. His promise doesn't come back void. It will, be, it will happen. So find it. You think salvation is, is a promise? Yeah. Is, is protection a promise? And I know that your cogs are running because you know you've seen it in Scripture. And so God's saying, pray my will, pray my word, pray the promises that I have placed in the pages of this, of this, of this Bible. I've placed it there. The promises will not, uh, not, not, not withhold. They will come. And so God is encouraging us to pray His promises. And so when we are consistent and, we pray, uh, and, 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 and pray His promises, we stand in His promises, we have the confidence and the boldness, church. We cannot waver because He said it. I mean, Abraham, 
I mean, even his name was changed to hold to the promise. And so God changed his name to remind him, the father of many nations, even though he was, he was barren until he was 100. Hey, crazy. His promises will come. His promises will come. And it's revealed in his word. And so my prayer for us as a church is that we would increase our knowledge and our memorization of the scriptures. Why? Because when we find ourselves in the trenches or we find ourselves that there are needs in the streets and there's needs at our work and our needs in our home, that we can bow our knee and say, God, your word declares, standing on your word. I'm not looking at the circumstances. You, there's facts and there's truth. I'm looking at the facts, but I'm standing on the truth. The truth supersedes the facts. Like you think gravity was all it is until the law of lift came into. And John uses that every week. Up in the plane. Law of lift. There is a law of God that supersedes what, we ha what we're facing. And when we see that, so we need to wrap ourselves in the promises of God. So when we see a need, we announce His promise to that. When we see a, a situation, we announce the promise of God in that. Musicians, if I could have you up here. Keep looking up there, finding, wh where's the clock? Now I've got a big clock. A big <laughs> clock is for the preachers to watch it. Hallelujah. So in summary, church, the joy of prayer is seeing answered prayer. And answered prayer comes when we, we, we see that there is steps we need to take to see God come through and, and watch over his word to perform it. We pray in the name of Jesus with praise and thanksgiving, with no condemnation, with the right motive or the right relationships, helped and directed by the Holy Spirit to pray his will, which is his promise, which is in his word. And that's a summary of the, of, of the, of, of the seven thoughts that I want to just give you today about importance of praying the right way. God wants us to pray and he can't wait for us to pray. He's standing and wanting to commission angels to answer prayer. And so as we um, continue this, this, this month and we pray, let's boldly and confidently come and pray. Confidently pray. Confidently pray. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. One thing I muttered to say, that many times we dive into praying and many times we need to pray before we pray. When we stand with the issue in front of us, I suggest you pray and say, Father, I have this issue. How do I pray? How do I pray for this? And if you would allow Holy Spirit time, He would start giving you the unction. Start giving you a flow of thoughts, flow of scripture, an attitude, a motive. How can I tackle this, Father, that will bring glory to your name? so important to pray before you pray. Many times as a minister, you're always called, okay, you, you, you need to pray. And sometimes I just need to ask the Father, how do I pray? And sometimes He says, I don't want you to pray. Sometimes He says, I want you to pray this way. Always reminded of Smith Wigglesworth when he go, went down the line of people and he came across two deaf and dumb people side by side. He asked Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, how do I pray for this one? And He says, touch his lips and touch his ears declare him to speak and hear and he did he went to the next one and me I would have just done the same as the last one but he prayed again say father how do I pray for this he says rebuke the spirit of deaf and dumbness I use that example many times from this pulpit but it emphasizes we need to pray before we pray
So, Father, I pray for this family and for those that are hearing us from live stream and those that haven't been able to get here, that have committed themselves in one way, whether it's just for an hour, whether it's just, uh, just for a day, or whether it's the whole time to pray this February for, 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 the, for the year ahead, for the increase of 2019. Father, I, 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 just, I just thank you that most of all that the desire, the appetite, the joy of prayer would increase, increase, increase for your glory, my God. So we may see your kingdom come. So we may see your abundance and that your promises are yes and amen in Jesus. And so, Father, we pray for that over the lives. There's many, many a situation, many a need, many a, a, a challenge within the sound of my voice now. And, uh, Father, I pray that we would be able to pray boldly and confidently, knowing that the promises are yes and amen. And so, Father, I thank you. I pray release on those prayers. Father, I thank you that, that we would align ourselves to what was Scripture communicated with us today, that we align ourselves to the conditions of prayer, that when we pray, Father, that we are praying not amiss, that we are praying your will, your way, for your purpose. For, Father, we are yielded vessels for the Master's use. And so, Father, we thank you. That we may be your voice in prayer for others. Where we may be a voice that boldly declares and announces the answer and announces the solution and announces those things because your word has declared it. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you that this church will be known as a church that prays. This church will be known as a church that will declare and announce and the things will change and that, that sea will part. Father, that, that, that disease will go. That, Father, that sight will be seen. That that lame will walk, my God. All these things in Jesus' name. For all authority has been given to that name. And every, every situation will bow its knee to that name, which, in, which we declare. So, Father, use us as vessels for the Master in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. amen. I want to uh, invite those that need prayer. We're going to start uh, and just ask the musicians just to close us with song, and then I'll just ask uh, Joey to close us in prayer. Um, but I, I, these, these two areas here, as soon as the music st starts at the end of the service, I want you to come up because if we see you standing up there, we want to stand in agreement and pray with you. Amen. So please would you come. Please would you stand, and, 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 and let's just pray, and let's believe in the name of Jesus that, Father, the promises are yes and amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, musicians. Let the king.